Pulling in at number 10, this is the glamorous B-Body, the Belvedere-based Plymouth GTX, an upscale muscle car for the go-fast enthusiast with refined tastes. The interior was a little more luxurious than that of the Plymouth Roadrunner and could be equipped with two different 440 cubic inch engines or the Monster Hemi providing an underrated 425 horsepower from its 426 cubic inch displacement. It needed that much shove to hustle its 4,000 pounds of weight down the quarter mile, which meant it could accomplish it in 13.85 seconds at 104 miles per hour. A brand new nicely optioned Hemi GTX would ding your wallet for about $4,200 in 1970, and now after maturing like fine wine over the years, would cost about 100,000 smackers at auction to make it yours. Arriving at number 9 is the Oldsmobile 442 with the W30 option package, a luxury muscle car based on GM's midsize A-body platform. This classy ride optioned with the W30 package got you the new for 1970 455 cubic inch 370 horsepower engine along with other performance enhancements. That plush interior was the place to be during those impromptu stoplight duels or when zipping down the quarter mile at the racetrack. How quick was it? The end of the quarter mile would arrive in 13.8 seconds at 103 miles per hour with the journey being jostle free and smoother than a Teflon slide. If you were to buy one brand new in 1970, the Oldsmobile Man would require about $4,200 to drive it home. If you want one today, prepare to pay a reasonable $63,000 at auction for one in great condition, which is the most inexpensive muscle car on our list. Grabbing the number 8 spot is the Dodge Coronet Super B with a 440 cubic inch 6 pack good for 390 horsepower. The Super B was Dodge's low priced muscle car. Savvy muscle car enthusiasts knew that low priced also meant stripped down, which meant less weight, which meant go faster. The Super B certainly delivered with the 440 six pack engine and 4 speed manual transmission, buzzing it down the quarter mile in 13.8 seconds at 102 miles per hour. Going fast in 1970 meant parting with about $4,000 to snag one for yourself when new. An automotive art piece for sure, the Super B has appreciated by about 1,775% over the years, recently going for around $75,000 at auction. Taking the number 7 spot is the Ford Torino Cobra with the 429 cubic inch Super Cobra Jet engine. Elevating the run-of-the-mill Cobra Jet to super status meant ticking off the drag pack option on the order sheet that fitted out the Cobra with a 3.91 to 1 final drive ratio along with significantly upgraded J-code engine components. All that extra goodness produced an underrated 375 horsepower. In actuality, it was more like 450 horsepower making the Super Cobra Jet quicker than any Mustang Ford sold in 1970. This Cobra would need 13.63 seconds to blaze from the start to finish line at the quarter mile at 105.9 miles per hour. With the Super Cobra Jet engine, this snake would have cost around $4,600 in 1970 when new. It's a relative muscle car bargain at auction these days, needing around $75,000 to put this fire-breathing snake into your collection. Driving home at number 6 is the Dodge Challenger RT446 pack. 1970 was the year that Dodge debuted its entrant into the pony car market to go up against the Mustang and Camaro, among others. Making the 440 cubic inch 6 pack engine was a masterstroke of genius by Dodge. It featured three two-barrel Holley carburetors that combined to output 390 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque and make this beast extra brutish. Down at the drag strip, it would devour the quarter mile in 13.6 seconds at 105 miles per hour, proving that it was indeed a formidable Challenger. Brand new in 1970, this Challenger cost around $4,700. Today. This muscle car titan commands respect and a hefty price tag. At auction, 
looked to be parting ways with about $110,000 to return to the glory days of muscle car 1970 heaven. Blowing by the competition with a solid number 5 finish is the Pontiac GTO with the 400 cubic inch Ram Air 4 engine. And it wasn't even the largest engine available that year. That would have been the new for 1970 455 cubic inch 360 horsepower engine. But the 400 Ram Air 4 was more powerful at 370 horsepower and the lighter option to give your goat more go. The Ram Air 4 GTO could sprint down the quarter mile in 13.5 seconds at 104 miles per hour. All it took to pry one of these loose from a Pontiac dealership and put a grin on your face in 1970 was $4,600. How much is it worth today? Settlers have been getting around $167,000 for a super clean all original one at auction lately. Here at number 4 is one of the coolest cars that Buick ever made, the GSX with the 455 cubic inch stage 1 engine option. This was going fast with class as the GSX was equipped with upscale trim and accessories that made it truly a Buick. It was definitely not under equipped by any means and is as close as you could get to a factory Cadillac muscle car. The 455 Stage 1 was good for 360 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. The highest torque rating of any American production performance car at the time. If it's at number 4 on our list, it was plenty speedy, making quick work of the quarter mile at 13.38 seconds at 105.5 miles per hour. All that Buick goodness would have cost about $4,900 in 1970, with only 479 Stage 1s produced, making them rarer than a unicorn with a mullet. Pick one up these days at auction for around $148,000. Arriving for a number 3 podium finish is the Plymouth Roadrunner. Of course this iconic legend has to have the monster 426 cubic inch Hemi engine residing between its fenders. The Gen 2 Hemi was underrated at 425 wampin' stompin' ponies and put out closer to 470 horsepower. Bigger numbers when referring to horsepower and torque are best in the muscle car world, while smaller numbers rule when talking about quarter mile times. And this beast was among the quickest in 1970, completing the quarter mile run in 13.3 seconds at 107 miles per hour. All that go would have set you back about $4,800 in 1970. But if you kept it for 50 plus years to help you fund your retirement, you could get around $190,000 at auction. Admittedly, it would be hard to part with. Taking the silver at number 3 is the Chevrolet Chevelle SS, but not just any old SS. The quick one to get in 1970 would be the SS with the LS6 454 cubic inch 450 horsepower tire shredder engine. For the 1970 model year, GM finally took the gloves off and allowed engines over 400 cubic inches to be installed in their mid-sized cars to go up against that pesky Hemi that kept eating their lunch at the drag strip and on the street. Even when it was parked, the Chevelle SS looked like a beast, and now it had the engine room credentials to back up its show with plenty of go. The quarter mile was child's play for the LS6 SS, making the finish line appear in 13.1 seconds at 107 miles per hour. Making this your own in 1970 would have required about $4,900, not cheap by any means back then. If the LS6 is what your heart desires today, prepare to pay around $200,000 at auction. This is it, the number one dominator for the quickest muscle car for the year 1970, the Plymouth Hemi Cuda. It is the lightest car of the 10 we've featured and also has the shortest wheelbase. Pair that together with the colossal 426 cubic inch Hemi engine delivering at least 425 horsepower, and we've got a street and drag strip superstar. It could shatter the quarter mile in 13 seconds at 108 miles per hour. 
While not a huge sales success back then, over time these beauties have become muscle car royalty, especially at CUDA combined with the rare Hemi engine option, of which only around 660 were produced that year. In 1970, you had to cough up $4,900 to hemify your CUDA experience and become the muscle car king of your neighborhood. This automotive equivalent of a masterpiece painting commands a premium at auction these days. Prepare to pay around $285,000 to add one to your collection.